Oyagala omukuru ku gwenja olugo berene bijukize mu nyumba yo kan kwanjulire Bucking Montage Photo Studio fiba kafurumu kube bifananyi no kola video oli na wedding birthday party kuchala nika baby shower photo shoot or music shoot na buli kimu kyo nacho oyagala fetu subulu kuwe bijukize birungi eri biroto byo ate no mwana watu kusinte zo mtu wa buli jo tusange bana nkula bikubitala ku prime tower level 3 room D04 okumanya bisingawo tukubira ku namba zino note musavu note biri emu note nya emu biri tano Oba, noti musavu tano tano, satu emu emu, musavu satu emu, oba, noti musavu musavu musavu, noti bili satu, nya noti tano. King Montage Photo Studio, fitu sobolo kuwe bijuki zebironji, atinu mwana watu kusinti izo mtu wabuli jo. Ok, welcome. Today we are going to be talking about the dark side of uh, Dubai. Uh, so many people want to go to Dubai to do different things and they don't know uh, that also Dubai, one of the largest, one of the beautiest cities in the whole world, also has got a dark side that they don't want actually tourists to see. So some photos circulating on social media are taken by an Irana photographer showing the horror and the dark side of Dubai. The stressful lives of South Asian workers who live to have a bright future and support their families. Like it is the same case in Africa. In Dubai, people belong to one of the three classes. The first one is Emirates. The second one is Expats. The third one is workers or low class people. Like there is always in the rest of the world. But this is the dark side of Dubai. If you really want to see the dark side of Dubai, you need to explore the lives of these three categories that are generally called workers. They make up the biggest population group in the United Arab Emirates. Are you talking about uh, talking to a 27 year old worker is doing a job for the past four years as a sweeper and gets around 800 AED. Mm -hmm. That is approximately uh, 139 uh, euros per month from which he transfers 500, that is 87, to his family to Bangladesh. Uh, not only that, some of them end up sleeping in washrooms. On the other hand, the normal citizen hardly stay out for five minutes in summers. Fahad visited the place where all these workers live and this is where the dark side of Dubai actually situated. Now you're going to listen to this and you'll be shocked. He said that the accommodation is 12 feet by 12 feet and contains six beds which or where six to eight workers are living. The food in the kitchen is usually cooked using gas cylinders in a very bad conditions. Nobody knows the dark side of Dubai where workers are facing a lot of problems because it is out of sight from the media. These photos that you're seeing right now will make people think about what is going on around, uh, around them and will encourage them to help the suffering class in Dubai. Not only that, some people would think that the workers in Saudi Arabia are also living in a similar situation, but it is not true. Somehow it may be but to a larger extent. It is not true. The rent in Saudi Arabia is four to five times lower than Dubai, so people have more space to live. For the more of the latest of this, we'll be continue giving you the dark side of Dubai here on Love Media. But going on and on and on about the dark side of Dubai, given the fact that now the population comes from all over the world in seek all to, to, to seek what to what to do in terms of employment and in terms of bettering their lives so so many tabloids so many newspapers have come out to talk about the dark side of dubai and i don't know why so many people think that dubai doesn't have the dark side like any other capital like any other city dubai also has its own uh, uh trials that it goes through and its own dark side now listen why wouldn't you want to move to a city that has three, six, five days of sunshine, tax-free income, and Jennifer Anson selling an ultimate lifestyle from 40,000 40, 40, feet above ground level? A question I asked myself in 2015 as I was making the big move to Dubai. The Dubai I was moving to was the Dubai I had seen in Jiggy Haddad's holiday Instagram home to the tallest, the biggest, and the brightest. In real life, Dubai is like unreliable tender debt. At first, it's on its best behavior. It will zip you through the dramatic train, 12 lane Sheikh Zayed Road in a sunny, red, shiny red sports car. 
it will then acquaint you with the world's tallest building, Burj Khalifa, and the grandiose version of Las Vegas, Borugaje Fountains. If you get a third date, you might even get to swim with a shark in an aquarium at a hotel. But during all this, the real Dubai will stay hidden until you move in. Once you have the keys to the door, the secrets will slowly unveil, making you uncomfortable, fragabusted, and deeply upset. Just like the integrity of the city and its inhabitants, Dubai's past has also been buried under all the sand, metal, glass, and steel. Literally, Dubai Museum, now the oldest standing institution in the city, lives two levels below the ground, and it's the only architectural structure that narrates the true tale. When the British left in the late 60s, United Arab Emirates had just started to discover gold and oil in its land. The locals at the time were camel dwellers, clueless and uneducated about what to do with the literal port of wealth. To fix this remarkable confusion, one emirate among them, held as a Sheikh Makutam, ambitiously decided to invite foreigners from neighboring countries and have them make UAE more livable. He promised a tax-free lifestyle in a desert in exchange for an Im image makeover. And has since managed to convince generation of non-emirates to call Dubai home. In the UAE, we see today emirates only constitute 11% of its hired uh, head count. With decades of uh, disparity, the population of Dubai, Dubai has become more complex. There are three different layers to the city, if all dramatically dependent on each other. First, are the ideologistic class, i.e. the local emirates, who are inexorably wealthy. You know you have spotted one if you see a polished metal jaguar carrying a fairy pet jaguar in the front seat. Exotic animals as pets are illegal in the UAE, yet a common sight among the rich. Then come the second layer of rich foreigner, foreign workers who are the brains of the nation, the CEOs, bank managers, project heads who will sit at sports bars to discuss their home country's failed political scenarios and then follow it with shots of tequila on a Tuesday night. The third layer is of the poor foreign worker who nobody wants to discuss. They do 12 hour shift at a construction site in the middle of the desert on a 50 Celsius day. Their living conditions are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly controversial, with four to four workers sharing a shoebox sized space in the name of a home. Yet, they are the men who have given Dubai its gleaming glory. Scrub the sheen off the glass in this concrete jungle, and the truth will melt in your hands. The modern day slavery in the UAE is painfully obvious. But the propaganda styled tourism videos and Instagram handles will tell you otherwise. The experts are still doing all the work to prevent the ruler of Dubai with his version, with his vision for the country, but the government won't let you believe that. Now listen, only after spending two years in the catastrophic big city and educating myself did i realize how double standards were polluting the minds of every expert in the country you would be standing in a posh outpost of a british restaurant in dubai marine elegantly shipping your 38 dollar glass of bombay sophia garnished with lebron cucumber and you would have interpreted views of construction <laughs> workers tiptoeing atop a crane. You would be able to buy alcohol bottles at any supermarket, Islamic country laws, but hotels and bars would save 1,000 worth of champagne on top. The motto in this country, let's ask the motto in the town, don't talk about it, don't question any hypocrisy, don't write about it. Now you've talked about it. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist, right? This is what expert community in Dubai will teach you when you first start seeing the reality. People remain so obnoxious, intoxicated in their own shelter of seven-star hotels, Friday booze branches and ladies' night. 
they forget the realities that came attached to this part of the world. For the first few months, I followed the expert loose. I gave in to loving the ostentatious circuited life, and rightly so. It soon came to haunt me. On weeknights, I would drink bottomless fruits of Dom Progen, and in the middle, have my taxi driver tell me how he was not able to buy a goat for his family in Pakistan this Eid. I would stay see on a stinker hot day in the extravagance of a world class hotel in Palm Jamail, but be reminded of the harsh living conditions of the labor class on the same afternoon. The palm tree dotted beaches would be swamped with sun dried British experts getting sozzled with the or besides a Muslim woman in a bikini lettering her five year old with SPF 50. This is Disneyland for adults. If you can't play with toys in your home country, set a home base within this superficialist where you will never have a question. Never have to question its virtue or your conscience. Somewhere between the cool white robes and the sober bank banks is a generation of mineral emirates who are being rewarded for existing. You can imagine. If you're a young local here, the government pays you for your education. You are given a mansion when you get married. The broad comes with an army for help, maid, chef, nanny, driver, personal trainer. All your overseas holidays are paid for. Want the new iPhone before Mark Zuckerberg? Done. Want a Uber chopper to land in your bedroom? No worries. An Emirate millennial never has to use an ATM. As the humble desert sits quietly on the east of the city watching the madness unfolds, experts watch Dubai play Santa Cruz. From rotating hotels to flying taxis, Dubai cannot be stopped with its daily announcement of how can we do this better than everyone else. Two years of this, I questioned, wasn't, wasn't it my responsibility to contribute to a society that valued basic human and cultural rights? It's an uh, obscene display of wealth, bling and power was making me pathetic. I was living in a glistering Dubai high rise that wasn't built by a local sheikh, but by unidentified blue collared laborer from a village in India. Was I forgetting this? No. The bright electric lights and shiny marble of the Dubai mall started, started on a, a hunt, started to hunt my head. The loud glee of children rolling down the indoor snow slopes of chic Dubai made me furious. The soothing jazz music grooving at the speaker easy bar in Cavell Club Dubai ushered lonely. I was lost in my Michelin stared edible flowers on a plate. A music book flowered Dubai bubble like every expert. So come my decision to leave. I escaped its cruise before I collapsed. But I have a feeling Dubai may not be able to get out of its own mental constraint anytime soon. That is for you from Dubai. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Oyagalo mkuru kukwenja ulugubire nevi jukize mnyomba yo Kan kwa njulire Backing Montage Photo Studio Fiba kafurumu kube bifana nyi No color video Olina wedding Birthday party Kuchala Nika Baby shower Photoshoot Oba music shoot Nabulichimu chonacho oyagala Fetu sobolo kuwe bijukize bironji Iriye bilo tobyo Atenu mwana watu kusinti izo mtu waburi jo Tusangipo nankula bikubitala Kuprime Tower Level 3 Room D04 Okumanyi bisingao Tukubiri kunamba zino Note msavu note bili Emu note nya Emu bili tanu Oba, noti musavu tanu tanu, satu emu emu, musavu satu emu, oba, noti musavu musavu musavu, noti bili satu, nya noti tanu. King Montage Photo Studio, fitu sobolo kuwe bijukize bironji, atinu mwana watu kusinti izo mtu wabuli jo.